G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. Now today is Turquoise Day. So this was Pink Day. Do you remember Pink Day? That was it there. Love this one. Got some gorgeous, gorgeous cells. So yeah, got some white. Love the white cells in there. Got some black. Didn't use very much black. I'm not going to use very much black again today either. Um, I've got half the amount of black as I have to the other colours. So whereas these are like a full cup, I've only got half a cup of black. Because it does take over. So <clears throat> pouring medium, same as usual. 60% glue. I'm using Elmer's glue all, but you can use whatever craft glue you can get your hands on. It can be a clear glue. Just don't use a woodworking glue, okay? Just a craft glue. Uh, so 60% <clears throat> glue, 40% water. Put it in a big bottle. Give it a shake. Make it the day before, though, if you're going to be making it. <laughs> Otherwise, it gets a lot of bubbles in it from shaking it. And then equal parts <clears throat> of paint to pouring medium. That's what I do with my paint. If you're using a really thin paint, you might need two parts paint, one part pouring medium. If you're using a really thick paint, you might need two parts pouring medium, one part paint. I start at one to one and then I add water if I need to. So I like to do the eight second rule. I'm sure you've heard me do that before. So I hold my stick probably about that much up the bottom of the stick from the bottom of the um, paint and I count to eight and then it should break okay I don't want it breaking before eight here we go one two three four five six seven eight and it broke did you see that hopefully you saw that so there's no point you're going one two three four five six seven eight <laughs> all right it's got to be one two let's try one cat and dog I guess you could go one cat and dog, two cat and dog. It depends on how fast you count, but I sort of do it per second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, if it breaks at like nine, that's okay. Just don't let it break at seven. I like it to be, that's the thickness, because it's really hard. You know, you can say, well, it's a mound on a mound, but you could have a big mound on a little mound. And anyway, that's how I do it. Treadmill silicone for cells. So I've got 70 grams of pouring medium, 70 grams of paint. I'm going to do four drops. One, two, three, four. Actually, let's do five because it's almost 150 grams, which is five. It probably is actually 150 grams because I added water, which is five ounces, so five drops. Uh, you can just have three because you're just a half a cup. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four, five. So they're all the same consistency. They break at eight seconds. Give them a good stir up, otherwise you'll have big blobs of silicone. <clears throat> when you uh, tilt your canvas, you'll just get really big blobs and then they'll stretch out and they won't look pretty. So stir it in nicely. Some people say don't stir your silicone and you'll get big cells. Well, yeah, but they'll be big blobs. The way to get big cells is to stretch them and we're going to do that by tilting the canvas so you need to stir your silicone well you get your little cells that pop up and then we grow them by stretching the canvas as you'll see in a few minutes so it doesn't have anything to do with the amount of time that you stir you want to stir it in properly to avoid those big blobs of oil at the end now colors turquoise teal aqua whatever you want to call it i've got a dark turquoise which is this one here it's kind of a more of a greeny turquoise like a ocean sea kind of a color um, and then we've got a lighter turquoise oh, actually this is just normal turquoise this one here plain turquoise so that's the greeny turquoise this is the bluey turquoise <clears throat> excuse me so yeah this was turquoise with a little bit of um, phthalo blue and phthalo green to make it dark this is normal turquoise with a bit of blue and then that's just your normal turquoise I'll show you the bottle they're all the Montmartre they're all the Montmartre except for the black because 
black mont marked. I think it's a bit old and it's doing weird things. So let's hit there. All of them. Right, now we've got the oil in, we'll start layering. So we want two layers, so half half your cup for the first layer. So don't put too much in. Because we want to save the other half for the the next layer, so about half. And then we start drizzling it. Don't hold your cup up really high, the paint's going to drop down. Get it down as low as you can. And just pour a little drizzle over the top. Don't put a big blob in, otherwise it's just going to sink to the bottom. Just want to do a, a very light kind of drizzle. If you need to, you can drizzle over again, but the paint's relatively thick, so it kind of just sits on top. It stays separated. If your paints are dropping straight through, then that's a sign that they're too thin. You might want to add a bit more paint to thicken it up. I'm a wealth of information this morning, aren't I? <laughs> now, just a little bit of black. Just a little drizzle, I'm not going to cover the whole surface. Because the black, as I said, does take over. So I've gone dark, light, <clears throat> well that one's darker, that one's darkest again, that one's light, and then that one's dark again. So try and go light, dark, light, dark. Because if you put two dark colours next to each other, you won't even see the cells when they pop up. Now if you put these two colours next to each other, are you going to see the, the rings? of the different cells? Probably not. No, so try and separate them. Here we go, second layer. And this is when you just finish off your paint. You can scrape everything out. Try and make your cups equal. Like my end cup tends to have the least amount of paint in it. I think I pour more for the first couple of cups. So just be aware of that. Stand back and look at them and go, okay, this one needs a bit more. So you put more in on the next round, I guess. Some white. <clears throat> when I was making these up, I thought, oh, wouldn't these be divine, these colours, as a sandwich pour? So I'll be doing that soon. I really, really love doing the ocean sort of colours in a sandwich pour. They just look so pretty. So those of you that don't know what a sandwich pour is, you can check out my previous videos, but I will be doing one. Oops, drop my stick. I will be doing one very soon. So you have like three big cups of white, and you only have little bits of colour like this much. And then you put your white down, a little bit of colour, drizzle a little bit more, uh, put more white in, drizzle a little bit more colour, and more white. So it's like a triple decker sandwich. Your white is your bread. And then your, your colour is a little bit of filling and then you have another piece of bread and another little bit of filling and another piece of bread. So that's a triple decker sandwich. That's what I like to do anyway. And then you pour it out like that. And you have a really pretty watery, pastel-y kind of a look to your painting. Alright, a little bit more black. I probably have some black left over, which is fine. So I don't use very much. I can use it for my next pour so we'll keep that separate and then the last one um, and that's just your regular turquoise over the top if you can't drizzle like this you can just you know how you can just pour the paint down the side you can do that too it doesn't matter it works either way don't be too stressed if you can't drizzle paint it takes a bit of practice I've been doing this for almost five years now. When we moved into our new house out on acreage, I had no art that suited my new colour scheme because the old house had all, um, it was more like um, Japanese sort of themed. It had pale floors, white walls, red feature walls, dark chocolate brown furniture. So I had art that was brown, red, white, very Asian sort of influence to it. And then when I moved out here to Acreage, I wanted more of like a Hampton style because we had the pale timber floors, the grey walls, um, grey furniture with pops of navy. So more of a Hampton's pale and I had nothing to go on the walls. And it was so expensive to buy pieces of art and we'd only just moved and it was all expensive and I couldn't afford art. So I thought, I'll just, I can paint something. 
So I started looking on, on Mr. Google at, um, you know, what I could be inspired by. And um, I found acrylic pouring and I thought, I can give that a go. I'm, I'm sure I can, but oh my gosh, you should see my first paintings. <laughs> I guess if you've been there, you know, they're, they're not good, the first ones. But um, yeah, I've been doing it for like five years now, four or five years. So I kind of got the hang of it now. Right. Let's drag these down. All right. Actually, I might just bring them in a little bit. Last time I did them, they all fall, fell down the side. I'll bring it down just a touch. All right, here we go. Oh, look at all the black. Who am I saying? I don't want so much black. I'm just going to cover the corners with the leftovers. If you're going to put it on the corners, just keep it in the same sort of line. Don't sort of swirl it around like that. The, the good thing about black like that is the light coloured cells come through. I might just put that one there actually and drag the other way. Put that there, a little bit there. Whatever you do, don't put any leftovers back through the centre because they're all stripy like this. They're a bit muddy. Make sure you don't drip your cup over the center. So much to remember. Let's turn this around. I'm going to go the other way. Only because this one's come out like that. All right, here we go. So that's kind of filled in that gap. See, I've got leftovers in there. Don't, don't do that. Don't put it back up. Just, if you need to put it back on the side, you can put some more on the side, but don't go through the center again. It'll just spoil it. Trust me, I've done it. It's not a good look. All right, so that can all just get turfed out now. This one, I must have had a little bit more black in that one, I guess. All right. So I think this is the area here that needs covering the most. So we'll go that way first. Make sure you take your hands around the side as well. If you've got paint on your hands, you don't want to drip into the center. Okay, so you guys know the drill. We're going to walk the paint left and right, left and right to cover the sides, to cover these. Don't worry about your lines going crooked or anything. It's It doesn't matter. Like, just because I tend to try and keep straight lines doesn't mean that you guys have to. Now, you can use a corner catcher, just a piece of cardboard like that, just to stop all your paint flying off the canvas because you don't want to lose your paint. Go into the corner, come back, and then let it go. All right, you, you want to keep as much paint on the surface as you can because you've still got to go the other way. And you are going to lose some, obviously, but you don't want to lose too much. Put that over there. Oh, it's looking amazing. Turn it around. I love these colors. They've got to be my favorite colors to use. Now, this blobby bit here that kind of dripped out the end of the cup it will most likely go when I tilt um, I'm just gonna pull that paint over there just to wet the sides just to make it easier for the paint to flow over uh, now I'm going to where's the weight of the paint I'm going to torch now with my big boy blowtorch and I can see already the cells coming up. And you can see how they're popping up through the black. The black's the opaque. So is the white, but you do get more cells through an opaque. Now, don't get too close. Start up really high. You can always get a bit closer if nothing's happening. But don't get really close and then you've got a million cells and you can't take them back. So start up high. Get closer if you need to. Slowly, slowly get closer. But just start up nice and high. Round and round, I do little circles with my torch. Little circles as I go round and round across the canvas, being bubbles, bringing up cells. It takes a little while for the um, the paint to get warmed up, and then the silicone oil wants to come to the surface because you know how oil and water, the oil wants to come to the surface. So the silicone oil wants to come to the surface, so it takes a little while, it's paint's thick, 
takes a little while for the heat to transfer down through the layers of paint. Bring that silicone oil up with it to the surface. Now I'm working on this panel here. I kind of do one panel at a time. Some of them are more just like little white flicks which are bubbles popping but you need to get a tiny bit closer just to heat, as I said, heat the paint to get the cells to come through. Otherwise it just looks like little white dots that have like because of the, um, the bubbles that have popped. Now I want a few more kind of in here. I don't want to overdo it. Oops, see there I got a bit close and I got a bit cluster. That's what happens when you get too close. So just be careful. It's tricky, you know, when you think, oh, I just want a few just in like this area. So because you want to get that area, you tend to get closer because you'd want to get that area, you don't want to get that area. And then because you get closer, you get like a colony of, of cells, a cluster. <gasps> Love that panel. Oh my gosh. How pretty is that? Love it. Little gorgeous. That's a cute little caterpillar, that one. See how the cells have all joined together? Yeah, it's pretty. Okay. Oh, see, I would like some more just there. Let's try just there. So it takes a few seconds. I've heated that. It takes a few seconds for the cells to come up. So, you know, heat it, move somewhere else, and then come back and go, yeah, do I want any more? After a few have popped up. I might want a few more. There's a few more coming now. So just be patient. Wait for them to come up. Actually, this, this line through here hasn't got much, has it? I wonder if I can get any through there. There's a few coming up through there. The problem with, and you can see it there. Actually, I'm going to bring you down. I want to show you. I want to show you what I mean. It's really weird. Oh, it's blue through my screen. It's not. I just want to show you what I'm talking about. I need to come in down close. For some reason, there's a little line through that colour. See the line? And then on the line where I've torched, I've got caterpillars. So if I had to torch further up onto that line there where the, two, where the colours kind of join I would get more caterpillars there. See that? It's weird isn't it? They tend to come up on lines. Hmm. Loving these. All right let's get you back up onto the tripod. Not making your casting come on. <laughs> Moving you. I just wanted to show you that. All right I'll bring you back in a little bit now that we've finished kind of tilting a lot. There we go. It does look much blue, much bluer through my screen though. It's turquoise. It always does that. All right, let me get my gloves back on. And now this is where we stretch the cells basically. But just be careful not to overstretch them. It's it's the hardest part, the tilting. All right, so you can see where the weight of the paint is. It's it's across here. You can see. So we need to just gently back and forth. We need to go over the side, so we need to get the paint there. We need to come back. We need to go over these sides. Don't just go straight down. We'll come back. So if you go straight down, you're going to lose all that paint and your sides aren't going to get covered. So now we've got to go this way. We do need to go over the corner there. I'm not going to use the corner catcher because I want the corner to be covered. Now this side, we're going to go over here. We're going to lose that bit. I'm going to lose that bit, bit there and then we're going to be done. Ready? There we go. I'll come back. Now put it down, have a little look at it, see what we think. Oh my god, I love that dark panel. That can be the bottom and then that can be the top. It's funny how you get different colours. Must have had just a little bit more black in that one. I, I don't know. Right. Um, do I want to torch anymore? I might just torch a little bit just up here and this will give us some little small cells because we've got some bigger cells so I'm just going to go in a few areas and just get some smaller cells popping through hey Only because 
I liked I like the look of having the, the big cells with the small cells. You don't have to, you could be quite happy just leaving it like that. Um, I, I just like having that little bit of extra, just a bit of extra dimension with the, the big cells and the little cells. I got a bit close there, there's a bit of blob there. I don't know that I can get rid of that though. So now that you've got your little cells that have popped up, you can just leave it or you can just basically just move your paint. I might actually see if I can go that way. I don't know if I can though. I don't know if I can get that little bit off. You have to get your paint down to where you want it to go off. There it goes, I did it. Oh my God, that was, yeah, it's probably not a good idea to do that, <laughs> but um, I wanted that area off. So all the little cells now have, have grown. See how they've grown? That was with those little ones that I just added. But yeah, I didn't like that. But now that I've gone over the edge, those ones have kind of stretched. But um, it's, it's probably, you don't need to do that. You know, that's just me being pedantic. Alrighty, love it, love it, love it. And it just gives those tiny little cells a chance to, to grow a little bit more. Now, I missed a corner. I missed that corner too, I'm just finger painting. Now, with your, either with your gloved finger or with a palette knife or something, or a pop stick or something, drag it gently along the bottom just to catch your drips because that'll stop your paint being dragged off the side. And you can use that to actually go over your corners if you've missed your corners. You missed a bit there. Just carefully run your finger underneath. Catch those drips because A, you don't want it dripping everywhere because I'm going to move this now over to my drying rack. Um, I don't want it dripping all over it. And two, the weight of the drips underneath will keep pulling the paint down off the sides. So just leave it like that. Oh, I love it, you guys. I'm going to get these gloves off and take you down for a close-up. So pretty. Do you like this one? I just wish you could see how aqua it is. When I take the photo, um, it'll it'll show more aqua because it's just showing it shows more blue. It always does through my screen. Look at that. Look at those white rings around the cells. See the whites that are opaque. And the other colours are lighter. So they drop down. Sorry, wrong way around. The opaque is heavier. It drops down around the outside of the cells and makes the rings. Really pretty. Look at that one. Looks like a little eyeball. And these here, look at those. How pretty are they? We've got white on the outside. And then we've got... I don't know if that's the dark teal or whether that's the black. And then the lighter turquoise on the inside. Here's our little caterpillar friend. I should do some pores where I don't flip and drag. I just flip because then you don't get the stripes. I mean, I, I personally like the stripes. That's sort of my the thing I do, but I have done some where I just flip and then you don't get the stripes. So that works nicely too. Oh, come this way, I'll get the ring light in the way. So there we go, there it is, love it. Let me know what you think. Right, next one, what color are we gonna do? I've done greens, pinks and turquoise so far. So let me know what's next and comment down below. Right, thanks for watching you guys. Appreciate it. And um, I'll see you real soon for the next video. Okay, love you all. Bye for now.